7.30 now on our Wednesday morning. Joshua Robinson is live at the podium in Spokane. He'll tell us everything you need to know about its financial impact to the city. And we're taking you outside where we've got some clouds hanging out overhead, but signs are starting to show that those are going to break and sun returns later today. The annual Bigfoot Festival is coming to Medellin Falls this summer, so we're talking with the event's organizer here on Up With Creme. He will join us in just a few minutes. And I got to catch up with one of the first competitors on a new reality show here on CBS. I can be bloody, I can be hurt, I'm still going to keep pushing, I'm going to still keep going. I don't quit, and I won't quit. And he did it, he told us all about being on the set of Tough as Nails. Up with Krim begins now. Earthquake, earthquake. Well, a new app will soon help people find cover in an earthquake, and it was developed right here in Washington State. Shake Alert warns you seconds or minutes before an earthquake, and that alert will be sent right to your phone. So coming up at the top of the hour, we'll tell you more about the app experts are calling a game changer. Thanks so much for being with us here on Up With Krem. One of us here knows very well that every second counts of warning if you have an earthquake. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of stuff that uh, I grew up believing about earthquakes, it turns out might not be true. And after living through a major earthquake and then aftershocks for more than a year, I think wow. I got it down. And even a little bit of warning might give you just enough peace of mind to not make it so traumatic. Absolutely. So we'll go into more of what to expect from that app and when it can be downloaded. But in the meantime, let's take a look outside this morning with Jeremy. Ah, there we go. Let's take you outside. A little bit of cloud cover as we kick things off early on this morning. And temperatures hanging out in the low 20s. We're at 22 degrees here in town with that cloud cover. And I think signs are showing that it is going to break here in about the next two hours. We're already starting to see some breaks in those clouds up in Sandpoint over in Wenatchee. But us here in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, well, we're in the clouds. Moses Lake, you're in the fog. That cloud is just sitting on the ground. It's a lazy cloud. It's not getting up and in the sky. So, hey, fog, leave. That's what we're saying early on this morning because once it does, we get sunshine. Plenty of sunshine in the forecast later on this afternoon, but enjoy it while you can. It seems our active weather pattern just won't give up. We've got more snow in the forecast and that arrives later in the day tomorrow. So for now, this is kind of our only sun in the forecast. Enjoy it. Temps in the mid 30s later on this afternoon. I think that sun, if it comes out, could bump us up to about 35. If it doesn't, I still think we get above freezing. So it's nice and warm. <laughs> All about perspective, those baby steps as we get warmer and warmer. Yeah. All right, Jeremy, thank you. 733 now. Well, the U.S. Track and Field Indoor Championships are coming to Spokane in 2022, and that event will be one of the first in the city's new sports facilities. Now, this morning, Joshua Robinson is live from outside the podium with more on our first look inside. Hi, Joshua. Hey there, Jen. Good morning. Yeah, when it does open its doors in November, the podium will become the newest and most innovative in some ways sports venues that we've seen in our area. Of course, it's one thing to say that it's innovative. It's another thing entirely to say that it's going to bring things that are only going to be seen here west of the Mississippi River. So let's take a look at what it means with their new hydraulic banked track. In layman's terms, that track basically is a track that would be able to tilt up to a 10 degree angle and something like that really helps athletes with their times. That is one of the huge elements that attracted USA Track and Field to use their facility for the 2022 championships championships next year. Now yesterday we got our first glimpse inside of the new sporting facility for the first time. It's a total of 135,000 square feet and it can seat up to 4,000 people of course once the pandemic is over. And when it does open the podium can be used for a slew of other events that could come to the Spokane area. It's basically being sold as a new go to spot for indoor sports venues. Of course, that is with the exception of football and soccer, which just require an entirely different kind of slew of needs with the turf, with the size, things like that. But this can fit everything else here in the podium. And now 
with that foundation set, the next move is to then entice those tournaments to come to Spokane. Of course, experts say this is a very competitive business in drawing those kinds of events, but they say there are a few things that we've got to our advantage in the Inland Northwest. Spokane has already proven itself as a sports hub with a history of bidding and successfully winning other tournaments. Also, they say the podium does offer some of the new quality facilities that these tournaments will look for, and they say that is a key to winning these new events compared to markets of similar or even larger sizes. Now, just look at the Tri Cities and the Yakima area here in Washington. They're already excelling and bringing in some new revenue after they made their own gesture to bring in their own new facilities as well. So the Spokane Sports Commission does report that the podium is going to bring in up to $33 million per year in direct tourism. That translates to about $1.7 million in state tax revenue. Now, Stephanie Curran, the CEO of the Spokane Public Facilities Dr District, breaks it down further, saying that each of the uh, thousands of tourists who would come to the podium spends an average of $150 to $300 in Spokane per day. Most people don't completely understand the economic impact. If people come into your community for an event, they stay in the hotel, they shop, they go to the restaurants, they shop, they rent a car, they spend money and then they leave, right? So they're not a drain on your, on your roads and your schools and all the infrastructure. So that's huge for a community. Now, the podium will also allow for more new jobs once the doors officially open. Now, as we take a live look, we can see kind of the beautiful image it casts across the riverfront area. It's such a unique view, especially as you come and you see it goes into the view of the river. You can see the pavilion. You can see all of downtown in Spokane, a really great view. And of course, that really sells a lot about the beauty of the downtown Spokane area. But we've got a lot more information for you if you need it about the podium. All you have to do is text the word podium to 509-448-2000. I'll send it back to you. All right, Joshua, thanks so much. Looking forward to that opening. We'll take a look now uh, here at 736. Frightening moments for a young skier in California. He slipped off of a chairlift on Tuesday and he's safe this morning thanks to the quick thinking of skiers below him who caught the whole thing on camera. Also, check it out. This boy was with his father on the chairlift when he somehow lost his balance. He slipped off the chair when his father wasn't able to hold on to him any longer. About a half a dozen people below the chair caught the boy by using orange plastic fencing like a net. According to the person who captured the video there, there were no injuries. Thank goodness he's okay. Wow, incredible video there. Yeah, definitely some interesting video. Good to see everyone safe. Well, take a look at what's trending. We first introduced you to Danny Moody when Tough as Nails premiered back in July. The new CBS reality show is based on challenges full of hardworking Americans, not afraid to get their hands dirty. Now, Danny is a third generation drywaller from Spokane and he is a company. Last time he spoke, he didn't really tell us much because he couldn't, but now we got the inside scoop. So we watched him make the final five and then power through the last challenge coming in second, winning $18,000. Now, Danny was a standout competitor from the beginning, winning the first challenge and staying strong all season. Danny with the wheelbarrow in, but is it enough? Is his job site clean? Yes, it is. And we have a winner. Woo! Everybody else keep going. You know what happens. The last two to finish are going into overtime. Danny, beautiful job. Excellent job. I get an advantage, which is a power over everybody else. With $200,000 on the line, I'm going to use the power for my best interest. I think Danny is going to be a tough guy to beat. I feel like we're going to be racing neck and neck all the way to the end of this thing. I'm still worried about everybody else, but if I had to pick somebody that I want to compete against as the last person standing, it would be Danny. As a Marine, if I win, I want to say that I beat the best. Well, I had the opportunity to chat with him about his experience. He quickly became a fan favorite and a goofball of the cast. The chopping wood challenge was so funny because that challenge, we were chopping wood for like 45 minutes. And I'm cracking dad jokes left and right. I'm associating with Phil. I'm associating with the production. I'm having such a good time and not even thinking about competition because, I mean, honestly, I wasn't worried that I was going to come in last. That Linda yells at me to shut up because she's trying to focus. And I'm just having a good time. So, I mean... 
I think my calm demeanor and knowing knowing myself and my ability not let the nerves get to me. What was the most unexpected thing behind the scenes that you can let our viewers in on? One of our challenges, since we're all scattered out, they made us reenact it after the competition to get better shots. So that's different. And I'm not going to say which challenges. And I know I'm not going to say which show, but some shows have such a big budget that after the challenge, they do the drone aerial shot. The people are dressed just in the same clothing and memorize every step that their character did to reenact it so that the wide shots aren't actually the characters, but they look like it. What? Yep. Reality TV is not full reality. Would you ever do Survivor on CBS? In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Survivor, I know, is filming in May. Let's do this. Well, I think we're going to see him pretty quickly on the next reality TV show. Now we saw Tara Alverson. She's a woman from Bothell, Washington. She now lives on a tugboat in Alaska. She's competing in the show's second season, which premiered last week. You can tune into the next episode of Tough as Nails tonight on Crime 2 at 8 p.m. Uh, Dana Marie, they're a lot more tough than me. <laughs> That's for sure. Me too, Jen. All right, it is 741 now, and this morning a new festival is celebrating a Pacific Northwest legend. A Bigfoot festival is coming to Medellin Falls, and after the break, organizers will be with us to tell us more about that festival and how they're safely pulling it off in the pandemic.